Skoda Octavia was once one of the least sophisticated Volkswagen Group family hatchback products. Not anymore. Almost nothing has been held back for this improved third generation version. It's still bigger and better value than most of its rivals, a Mondeo sized medium range hatch for the price of a Focus sized one. The difference now though is that it's clever enough to change the way you think about Skoda. More for less. That's what Skoda always aims to offer, and no model illustrates that philosophy better than the brand's most successful one, the Octavia family hatch. It's a car that became properly sophisticated when originally launched in this third generation form back in late 2012. But of course, the golf sector opposition has moved on too, particularly over the last few years. Now to keep up, Skoda has brought us the significantly improved Mark III model Octavia that's on test here. It needs to be good because this car remains the most fundamentally important one in the Czech brand's lineup. Uh, the Octavia nameplate actually dates back to 1959, but its real significance began in 1996 when it first appeared as one of Skoda's modern era Volkswagen engineered models. This was a golf segment car with Mondeo segment space, a recipe the market quickly embraced. Over the next two decades, more than 5 million Octavias were produced for sale in over 100 countries. And today, production takes place not only at the brand's factory in the Czech Republic, but also on assembly lines in China, in Russia, in India and Kazakhstan. As before, this improved Mark III model sits in between the Rapide hatch and the Superb in Skoda's lineup, and it promises to offer more space at a lower price than you get from the three competitors in the segment that share its engineering, the Volkswagen Golf, I'll say at Leon, and the Audi A3. Now that means use of the Volkswagen Group's stiff and sophisticated MQB platform and a well-regarded range of TSI petrol and TDI diesel engines. As to what's changed with this enhanced package, well, if you know the car, you'll notice the revised front end starting immediately. Skoda is also keen, though, that buyers should appreciate this updated model's smarter cabin, its upgraded media connectivity, and the stronger standards of electronic safety provision, too. It should all be enough to create a very strong package. Is that what's been delivered here? Let's find out. This Skoda has always been the choice of the pragmatic family motorist. He or she values comfort, uh, reassuring handling, refinement and quality. And he or she would be mildly surprised uh, by the notion that a car of this kind should offer anything more. It isn't as sharp to throw around as something in this class like, say, a Ford Focus. But then, why would it need to be? It is perhaps with that in mind that the German development team who created this Octavia felt able to be equally pragmatic when it came to issues of the suspension setup for this car. A sophisticated multi-link rear suspension package has been developed for this uh, model, but the Czech brands decided that mainstream Octavia buyers won't really notice its absence. Instead, uh, volume variants developing 150 PS or less get a torsion beam arrangement that's cheaper to make and assemble. Basically, only the high-performance VRS model customers will get to enjoy multi-link motoring. Does that matter? Well, probably not. Uh, the difference between the two setups only really becomes evident over very poor surfaces where the car fidgets about a bit or if you're throwing the car around on a country road. Now, both are scenarios in which the more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension setup would leave this Skoda more composed. At least when it does come to the twisty stuff, uh, compensation is provided for buyers of the lower order models in the form of the standard fitment across the range of the XDS electronic differential lock system uh, that was originally developed by the Volkswagen Group for the last generation Golf GTI. Like a rival Ford Focus's torque vectoring setup, it lightly brakes the inside front wheel through tight bends, sharpening turn-in and ensuring that all the power gets onto the tarmac. If you are minded to drive your Octavia with a bit of gumption and put this technology to the test, uh, then you might be surprised by just how agile it can be. 
True, there is more body roll than you get in the Volkswagen Golf and Seat Leon models that share this car's engineering, but there's lots of grip and the well-weighted steering makes it easy to place the nose just where you want it to be. This revised model's increase in the rear track width, uh, further aid stability, and the stiffness of the basic structure obviously helps too. This Czech contender has been transformed in this regard since the adoption of the sophisticated MQB platform that made its Skoda debut with its third generation Octavia. All of which makes rather more relevant a feature you might not expect to find on a family-minded Skoda of this sort, Drive Mode Select. Now, this is fitted as standard, providing you avoid entry-level trim, and it's one of those setups that enables you to tailor the feel of this Octavia uh, to suit the way that you want to drive. So press this button by the gear stick, and you'll be able to select from four available programs, so Eco, Sport, Normal, and Individual, and they all alter the throttle mapping, the steering feel, and and the engine management to suit your chosen driving style. Add the optional DCC dynamic chassis control system which enables you to tweak the suspension to suit the road and your mood and there's a fifth comfort mode. You'll want to know about engines. At the foot of the range lies a little one litre three-cylinder TSI petrol unit. You might think to be ill-suited to the task of lugging around the largest and most spacious family car in the segment, but you'd be wrong. Now we've warmed to this little power plant in other Volkswagen Group models, and we like it equally here. It's a revy, peppy little thing, putting out 115 PS, and that, along with this Octavia's relatively low curb weight of under 1.2 tonnes, makes possible 62 miles an hour in 9.9 seconds on route to 126 mph. Uh, so unless you regularly cover long distances or you tow, it'll probably be all you really need. That won't stop most buyers paying the extra for the direct diesel alternative, a 1.6 litre TDI unit that has the same engine output and delivers much the same kind of performance, uh, though you access it through a manual gearbox that has only five speeds rather than the six ratios that you get in the TSI models. Want more? Well, the next step up in the Octavia hierarchy is to an engine with 150 PS, either a 1.4 litre TSI petrol unit or the 2 litre TDI diesel we're trying today. Here, the case for diesel becomes slightly stronger thanks to the fact that a 340 Nm torque figure enables this TDI to deliver around 35% more pulling power than its petrol counterpart. Both engines will take you to 62 mph in just over 8 seconds on the way to a top speed of around 135 miles an hour. And those are figures that will hardly be affected if you opt for DSG automatic transmission. If you do have an auto preference, then it's worth knowing that the 2-litre diesel engine remains mated to the Volkswagen Group's old tech 6-speed DSG technology. Take the box for an auto shifter with any other Octavia engine and you'll get the quicker responding, more efficient 7-speed DSG setup that's been introduced as part of the improvements made to this revised third generation model. All of the engines I've covered so far are the same as those used in the pre facelifted version of this car. Uh, Skoda has, though, made a few alterations to the lineup's most powerful unit, the 2-litre petrol TSI model uh, that the top VRS models borrow from the Golf GTI. Now here, output's risen by 10 PS to 230 PS, plus there's also a 245 PS VRS245 flagship variant if you want it. In both cases, 62 mph from rest takes just over six and a half seconds on the way to an artificially limited maximum of 155 mph. But with the VRS245 model, uh, you'll get power down more easily courtesy of an electronically regulated VAQ limited slip differential that provides for particularly dynamic acceleration when you're exiting corners. Plus, on the top version, a performance sound generator gives the engine a rawtier sound. As before, VRS buyers also get a diesel option, a 184 PS version of the 2-litre TDI. Uh, that unit's figures are 7.9 seconds and 144 miles an hour. It's the TDI model that you have to have if you want your Octavia VRS to have the option of four-wheel drive. Ah yes, now four-wheel drive, we should mention that. Four-wheel drive Octavia models have, after all, been very popular over the years. All with attraction certainly has its appeal in a performance model, but if you want it in an Octavia, it's much more likely to be for practical purposes. 
Uh, mating the 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel engine we're trying here to four wheel drive after all does raise the brake towing capacity from 1.6 to 2 tonnes, which is quite a difference. Uh, the 4x4 system in question is, as usual, one of those on demand setups that cuts in when the incorporated multi plate clutch detects a lack of traction. Now, you can best exercise the capability of that package by opting for one of the Scout Estate models that offer a more sensible alternative to that compact SUV that you might have been considering. Uh, these come with rough road package underbody protection, um, a raised ride height, and a choice of both 2 litre TDI engines, the 150 PS unit with a manual gearbox, or the 184 PS power plant with a DSG Auto. For most of its production life, uh, the Octavia model line has always lacked a bit of street side presence. With this revised third generation version though, the Skoda designers have decided to put that right by giving the front end something of the look that was first seen on their Kodiak large SUV. Not everyone likes the overall effect, but we think it delivers the kind of distinctive character this Czech contender has long needed. Aside from that, uh, the recipe is as much as it was before. Buyers offer the choice of hatch or estate body styles that are uh, all a small but significant amount larger than most other cars in the Focus family hatchback segment. That restyled nose section uses a quad light layout that sees the dip beam housed in these outer headlights while the high beam uh, comes from these inner lamps that taper towards the smart chrome framed radiator grill. Full LED beams are now fitted to plush variants like this one and the centre part of the grill flows up into prominent twin bonnet creases that showcase the brand logo. Further down, the design is equally smart and intricate. Uh, the lower section of the front bumper featuring honeycomb detailing around a trim element that now runs across the entire width of the car. Move to the side and you get a better perspective for the larger than average size of this car. Now both this hatch variant and its estate counterpart measure in at nearly 4.7 metres in length, uh, making the Octavia nearly half a metre longer than, say, a Focus or a Golf. Actually, you could argue that it's much closer in size to something like a Mondeo or a Passat, but of course, Skoda has its superb to take on models of that sort. As before, the profile is visually stretched by the kind of sharp so-called tornado line that's found on so many model Volkswagen Group products. And further down, these uh, lower creases give the flanks some shape and they separate wheel arches housing a range of restyled rims that vary in size from 16 to 18 inches. And we've got the 18 inches here. Move to the rear and if you happen to be familiar with the original version of this third generation Octavia you might notice this restyled bumper and that's one of the things that has increased the length of this facelifted model by up to 11 millimeters. Uh, the C-shaped tail lamp clusters have changed too. They now feature glistening LED technology in either low or high output forms. Uh, of course as usual what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, uh, primarily the light, stiff and sophisticated MQB platform that Skoda introduced with this car back in 2012. A slightly stretched version of the chassis also used by this model's Volkswagen Golf, Seat Leon and Audi A3 Volkswagen Group cousins. Time to take a seat inside what we're promised will be a much improved interior and sure enough that's exactly what's been served up here. Now in the original version of this car you couldn't help feeling that the finishing had been created with one eye on Skoda's relatively humble positioning in the Volkswagen Group hierarchy. Now you might still think that if budget limits you to entry level S trim, but further up the range it all feels very nice indeed. The ambiance of this plusher model uh, improved by upholstery that's trimmed in Alcantara and leather, silver trim around the air vents and shiny piano black finishing on the centre stack. Getting comfortable? Well, that's straightforward with lots of seat and wheel adjustment, making it easy to find the ideal position in front of this three-spoke wheel, uh, through which you view a pair of large dials fashioned in typical Skoda style with lots of annotation and grey outer rings. Uh, the gauges flank a centre information display, which brings all the main information you'll need into your line of sight. So things like driving data, phone status, uh, trip computer readouts, a compass and the settings that have been chosen for the navigation and the audio systems. 
A lot of this is also covered in larger and more graphic detail, but what's probably the defining feature of this restyled cabin, a classly prominent glass-fronted centre dash infotainment screen uh, that's fitted in different sizes across the model lineup. Mainstream variants offered in 6.5 inch form or 8 inches if you get the Amundsen package that includes navigation and integrated Wi Fi. Here, though, we've got the even bigger optional 9.2 inch Columbus monitor uh, that features a 64 gigabyte jukebox, a DVD player, and high speed LTE online access. All of the infotainment screens on offer are easy to use with big, clear on screen buttons and logical functionality. Plus, they all come complete with Skoda's SmartLink Plus package, which allows you to access the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto mirror link systems that are designed to duplicate your phone handset's display onto the monitor and enable you to use various apps on the move. Voice control is also included, provided you avoid entry level trim. This big Columbus 9.2 inch setup is particularly slick, although it does lack the gesture control functionality that the same design delivers in a Volkswagen Golf. Uh, that's no great loss though, otherwise the technology is the same, including the navigation and integrated Wi-Fi features that the Amundsen and Columbus screens use to link into a three-year infotainment online package that enables owners to make the most of the Czech brand's freshly developed Skoda Connect app. Now, via this, you can keep abreast of the weather, you can catch up on the news, um, you can also view Google Earth or Street View images. It'll help you to find local parking spaces or check fuel prices in the vicinity. If you've lent the uh, Octavia out, then Skoda Connect technology even makes it possible from home to monitor if the car has left a designated geographical boundary or if it's being driven at an inappropriately high speed. What else? Um, ergonomics. Well, rear vision on this hatch model can sometimes be slightly compromised by wide rear C pillars. Otherwise, though, there's really not much to fault here, unless you object to all the little buttons that feature in the center stack's lower climate control panel. Uh, just below them is a sliding top compartment that can feature an optional phone charging mat. Uh, now, unfortunately, the nearby USB and aux in points aren't incorporated within that storage area. On the subject of cabin practicality, well, there's plenty of it. Next to the thankfully conventional handbrake lie two cup holders that are separated by a centre moulding designed to allow bottle tops to be loosened with one hand. Uh, go for the optional Simply Clever pack and one of these holders will be filled with a neat rubber moulding slot designed for your smartphone. Now further back uh, is a storage box with a ratcheting top, plus there's a screen mounted parking ticket clip, uh, a pull out cubby by the driver's right knee, a decently shaped air conditioned glove box, an overhead sunglasses compartment and reasonably sized door bins that can both take a 1.5 litre bottle. On this plush model you can get a little compartment under the front passenger seat that houses an umbrella. Let's take a look in the rear, a compartment you enter via these wide opening doors. Once inside you start to really appreciate the benefits of this Octavia's unusually long 2686mm wheelbase and that's 50mm longer than a Volkswagen Golf. As a result it's more spacious back here than any other family hatch segment model, at least for legs and knees anyway. Um, this Skoda is a touch wider than the Segment Norm 2, so it'll be a little easier to take three adults back here. Although the people concerned, well, they'll still need to be on pretty friendly terms. And the middle occupant's leg space will be somewhat compromised by this rather high centre transmission tunnel. There are centre air vents above a small storage tray and there are Isofix child seat fastenings for the two outer seats. While the fold-out centre armrest incorporates cup holders, although this is unfortunately only fitted on plusher models. Still, these seat back mat pockets are standard across the range and you get door pockets that are roomy enough to hold a one litre drinks bottle. So let's head back to the boot, uh, pausing on the way to uh, notice another of Skoda's trumpeted so-called Simply Clever touches, this uh, ice scraper built into the fuel filler cap. 
Raise the uh, rather heavy rear hatch and you'll find yourself looking at one of this Octavia's major selling points. A huge aperture opens the way to an absolutely huge 590 litre load area that's almost twice as big as the trunk you get in a comparably priced Ford Focus and over 50% larger than the cargo area offered by a Volkswagen Golf. Even larger medium range models can't match this. It's 10% bigger than a Ford Mondeo or Vauxhall Insignia and over 20% bigger than a Mazda 6. A neat touch is this grab handle that hangs down from the open tailgate so that even smaller adults will be able to reach up and pull it down. And estate buyers get a powered rear hatch option. This is a practical space too, and it could be more so if Skoda had thought to build in an adjustable height boot floor to this hatch variant. Now you only get that above entry level trim on the estate model, which can also feature the option of a neat pull out LED torch built into the cargo area sidewall. Here there are two corner compartments uh, with slide out panels, uh, a pair of uh, pull out hooks and there's a 12 volt socket too. There's also a central hatch that enables lengthier items like skis to be accommodated without disturbing a pair of rear seat occupants. A little irritatingly, the cargo sidewall catches that would make it easier to push forward the split folding rear bench cost extra. Once the backrest is flattened though, um, this Octavia's luggage carrying advantages over its segment rivals remains impressive with 1580 litres of capacity freed up, although the space available isn't quite flat. Of course, if you're going to be pushing forward the rear bench on a regular basis, then you'd do better to opt for the estate variant, and that's a car which offers 610 litres with the seats in place, or 1740 litres with the back seat folded. Both hatch and estate body styles can be ordered with an optional fold flat front passenger seat too. Uh, that will allow the uh, carriage of really long or awkwardly shaped items like kayaks and bikes. Expect to pay somewhere in the 17 to 30,000 pound bracket for mainstream versions of this Octavia. Uh, should you want the spacious estate rather than this five door model, uh, then there's a 1200 pound model for model premium to find. Engine wise, the recipe is pretty simple. If you're choosing a variant that's lower down the range, uh, you'll need to decide whether it's worth finding a premium of just over 2,000 pounds, which will allow progression from the base one litre petrol unit to the 1.6 litre TDI diesel. Now these two power plants, like the mid-range 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine, come with the 1,250 pound option of the brand's latest seven speed DSG auto transmission, if you want that. If you want more power, then the 2-litre TSI and TDI engines used in the most desirable Octavia variants beckon. Now, with some plusher models, uh, the VRS performance versions, for example, 2-litre TDI derivatives can be ordered with the £1,500 option of four-wheel drive. Uh, turn to the SUV-style Octavia Scout estate variants, and as you'd expect, that 4x4 system is standard. Now, the DSG auto transmission setup is a particularly popular option on upper-spec Octavias, but the 2-litre engines have it in less efficient six-speed form and at a higher price premium of just under £1,400. On to the value proposition. Now, Skoda may still be perceived by some as a value brand, but its products are no longer really priced that way. As we discovered when we started to pitch the figures that are being asked here against those of rival contenders in the Focus and Golf-dominated family hatchback segment. Now, we started our comparisons, as you might, by looking at the rival set Leon and Volkswagen Golf models that share virtually all this car's engineering, but which offer significantly less space inside. So the Octavia has usually represented the most affordable route into the latest Volkswagen Group family hatchback technology, and to some extent that is still the case with this improved third generation model. Uh, the price advantage that this car enjoys against an equivalent say at Leon though has now become fractional. In fact, some TDI diesel Leons are these days actually cheaper than their Octavia counterparts. Um, if you switch your attention to an equivalent five-door Volkswagen Golf though, uh, a comparable Octavia with exactly the same engine would probably save you in the region of 12 to 1500 pounds. You'll also want to be briefed on the way that other volume family hatchbacks stack up against this Skoda's pricing. Uh, well, if you start with the most popular alternatives, you probably pay a fraction less for a Vauxhall Astra and a fraction more for either a Ford Focus or a Peugeot 308. 
Uh, credible sector contenders priced quite comparably to this Octavia include Hyundai's i30, Renault's Megane and the Honda Civic. Uh, if you are prepared to further widen your choices in this segment, a little more cash would get you certain versions of the Toyota Aris and the Mazda 3 that directly compete, but you would probably need a couple of thousand more to get yourself into a Mini Clubman. So that only leaves the really cheap area of this segment, uh, the inexpensive part of the class that the Octavia would once have competed in. So in rough model-for-model -model terms, you'd save around £1,500 by opting for a Citroen C4, about £2,000 in going for a Kia Seed, and a possibly as much as £3,000 if you were going to choose uh, an equivalent Fiat Tipo or an Nissan Pulsar. Now, Skoda would argue with some validity that it provides two other less sophisticated family hatchback models to compete with budget models like those, namely the Rapide and the Rapide Spaceback. Now, those two products may certainly have their place, but they can't offer the kind of cutting-edge engineering that you can now get with this car. Plus, they're smaller and they're less visually impressive. So, in short, if we'd decided that we wanted a Skoda in this sector, we'd stump up a bit more to get an Octavia. And we're guessing that you probably would too. If, having considered all that, you decide this is the car you want, then you're going to want a strong standard specification to be part of the deal. And, by and large, you shouldn't be disappointed. Um, even entry-level S-Spec gets you 16-inch alloy wheels, LED technology for the uh, daytime running lights and the rear lamps, uh, tinted glass, an alarm and powered heated mirrors, plus roof rails on the estate variant. Now, inside at this level, uh, there's air conditioning, a leather-bound steering wheel, and a six-and-a-half-inch Bolero-branded infotainment display uh, via which uh, you access an eight-speaker DAB audio system and Bluetooth phone connectivity, along with a Smart Link Plus feature that will allow you to connect in your phone using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Neat touches include an ice scraper that's built into the fuel filler lid, but to be honest, we'd rather that Skoda had given this car some kind of standard spare wheel. Notable emissions that you'll have to pay extra for on a base S level variant include front seat lumbar support, a trip computer and rear parking sensors. Although all three of those features come as standard on the SE variants that most Octavia customers are likely to choose. Uh, these get a smarter look uh, thanks to sleeker Ilias 16 inch wheels, front fog lights and a body coloured finish for the door mirrors and handles. Other standard stuff you can expect to find included at SE level includes uh, dual zone climate control, voice activation for the infotainment screen, cruise control and a drive mode select system which will allow you to alter the throttle response, uh, the steering feel and on the DSG auto models gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Here we've stretched to a plusher SEL variant. This pricey spec is fitted up with bigger 17-inch wheels, power folding mirrors, uh, privacy glass and automatic LED headlamps that dip themselves at night. Inside, SEL variants are marked out by upholstery that's trimmed in a combination of Alcantara and leather. Uh, plus there are nice touches like an auto-dimming rear view mirror and a colour display for the instrument binnacle trip computer. And also the provision of an umbrella that sits in its own compartment under the front passenger seat. In addition, at this level, you'll get a more sophisticated 8-inch Amundsen centre-dash touchscreen that incorporates navigation and the in-car Wi-Fi system that allow you to access uh, Skoda's infotainment online setup. Now that only leaves the really premium Octavia models available to customers less constrained by budget. If you prioritise performance, you'll favour the dynamically styled VRS variants. If you like the SUV look, then the four-wheel drive Scout Estate model with appeal with its off-road mode and rough road body protection package. If, on the other hand, your focus is purely on comfort, then the Laurent and Clermont derivatives provide a leather interior, a thumping 575-watt Canton sound system and niceties like heated front seats, 10-colour ambient interior lighting, keyless entry, 18-inch uh, wheels and an upgraded Columbus infotainment system that incorporates a larger 9.2-inch screen, 64-gigabyte uh, HDD memory, a DVD player and LTE high-speed online access. 
The navigation Wi-Fi package is an optional feature further down the Octavia range, and having that will allow you to get much more from the freshly introduced Skoda Connect media connectivity app that your dealer will be keen to tell you about. Now, if you download this, tick the box for the extra cost Care Connect package, and get your car fitted with the three years infotainment online option, uh, which also costs extra with the lower trim levels, then you'll be able to access a whole range of web-based services. Now, these provide information on things like traffic congestion, uh, fuel prices and parking availability, along with weather forecasts, online news, points of interest services and access to Google Earth and Google Street View images. Plus, via an incorporated Care Connect remote access feature, the Skoda Connect setup can also allow you to plan routes on your computer and then transfer them to the car. Having mentioned options, let's cover what's on offer if you'd like to embellish your chosen Octavia model with some extra features. Now, we've already mentioned the uh, drive mode select system. Well, ideally, we'd want to complete the functionality of that setup by adding in DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control Adaptive Damping. Now, this works via the normal and sports settings and adds in an extra comfort mode that you can select if you want a more cosseting standard of ride. Other niceties that some Octavia buyers might want to look at include an electric sunroof, um, powered front seats, keyless entry and the special ambient cabin lighting that you get with an interior light pack. Talking of lighting, the LED rear lamp clusters can be ordered in brighter, high functionality form and low spec variants can also be ordered with bi-xenon headlamps. Now, earlier I touched on the way that you can add in Wi-Fi and navigation if the model chosen lacks those features. Well, the Wi-Fi can be ordered either with or without WLAN, that's Wireless Local Area Network functionality, and an optional LTE module that facilitates high-speed online access. For ultimate connectivity, though, there's really nothing to beat the flagship Columbus infotainment setup I mentioned earlier, with its 9.2-inch screen, its jukebox and DVD player. Ideally, you want to pair all that up with the key option Skoda offers to audiophiles, the upgraded 10-speaker Canton sound system I previously mentioned. If your kids regularly use their tablets on the move, you might want to put extra rear USB ports in. And if you'll be using your Octavia for business, well, you might like to have the wireless phone charging and phone box option that boosts your smartphone signal and gives you a charging pad to top up its battery. What else? Well, if you've added an optional tow bar onto your Octavia, we'd think you'd certainly want the brilliant trailer assist feature via which you can manoeuvre the car using the mirror adjustment switch as it steers itself to park whatever you're towing. Now, if we were regular towers, well, that feature alone might well sell us this Skoda. And talking of manoeuvring, there's plenty in this regard to help non-towing owners too. A manoeuvre assist feature will break as soon as an obstacle is detected behind the vehicle. Uh, this setup controlled using an enhanced function of the rear parking sensors. Uh, front and rear parking sensors are of course optional if the uh, model you've chosen doesn't have them, as is a rear view camera. Now if you want to go further still in this regard, then as usual with pricey Skodas, there is the option of a park assist system and that will automatically steer you into spaces. On to uh, really practical touches. Your dealer is going to want to tell you about the so-called Simply Clever Pack that gives you a bespoke cup holder attachment for your smartphone, uh, a little waste bin and a double-sided boot floor with a lower wipe clean surface. Now, we'd also want to look at the fold flat front passenger seat and that allows you to more easily carry really long items like surfboards and kayaks. And the remote catches for the boot area that make it easier to fold down the rear seats. Um, if you want to go further, then cold mornings will be made more bearable by a heated steering wheel, heated seats front and rear, uh, a heated windscreen and heated windscreen washer nozzles. Now, do remember that you're going to need to pay extra for a spare wheel. And also that the adjustable height boot floor fitted to plusher versions of the estate body style costs extra at the bottom of the range. Plus, as usual, your dealer can guide you through the uh, usual roof rail options and there are carriers for things like bikes and roof boxes.
On to aesthetics. Uh, well, if you want to embellish the appearance of a mainstream variant, various options are available to you. As you expect, there's a range of different 17 and 18 inch alloy wheel designs. Uh, these 18 inch Alaris rims are particularly attractive and you'll probably want one of the optional metallic paint colors too. Uh, there's also privacy glass and there's a chrome package that adds a silver finish to the window surrounds. For the inside, uh, there's a three spoke super sport multifunction steering wheel. So on to safety. Now here, sophisticated standard features include an award-winning automatic post-collision braking system that automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if, uh, say, someone hits you and understandably you go to pieces, the car will automatically sort itself out. Uh, all versions of this Skoda can be specified with a Care Connect eCall emergency assistance feature, and that's part of the Skoda Connect app, and it kicks in with the airbags deploy, alerting the emergency services to your exact location, plus it can also work via the provided roof-mounted SOS button in the car. Avoid entry-level trim, and you also get a driver alert setup that will uh, monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness and prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee if it detects lethargy. These features are all in addition to all the normal safety kit that these days you'd expect on any large family car. So every version of this Skoda comes with twin front side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, as well as the usual traction and stability control systems, along with ABS brakes featuring brake assist, and that helps in emergency stops. And those will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard flashers. Uh, there's also a tyre pressure monitoring system, hill hold control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions and a pair of Isofix child seat mountings on the rear seat. A little disappointingly, Skoda hasn't followed the lead of some rivals in offering some sort of autonomous braking system standard across the Octavia range. Now that has been developed for this car, but you don't get it as standard unless you can stretch beyond the most affordable S and SE trim levels. If that is possible, then your car will come fitted with a package that uses radar to scan the road ahead in search of potential accident hazards. Now if one's detected, you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond, or well, perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now that whole setup works at cruising speeds with what's called front assist technology and in town with a city emergency braking setup that also incorporates a predictive pedestrian protection feature able to specifically search for pedestrians who might be about to step out in front of you. If you want to go further, then various additional safety options beckon. Uh, rear side airbags, for example, or the light assist system that will automatically dip the headlights for you at night to avoid dazzling other vehicles. As for other features, well, Blind Spot Detect works on the move to alert you if you're just about to pull dangerously out to overtake. Uh, travel Assist with traffic light recognition, pictures road signs and displays them for you on the dash. Uh, rear Cross Traffic Alert warns you of oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space. And Crew Protect Assist will sense an impending impact before, in a fraction of a second, preparing you to better withstand it by closing the sunroof and any open windows while tensioning the seat belts. Uh, there's also a lane assist feature that will detect if you're drifting out of your lane at cruising speeds before subtly applying steering to ease you back to where you should be. And uh, adaptive cruise control will automatically keep you a safe distance behind the car in front on the highway and remotely speed you up or slow you down in tune with the traffic flow. The sensible people who tend to buy Octavias are the sort of folk who want a frugal set of running costs. And by and large, this facelifted model effectively delivers them. At uh, the launch of this revised range, we were surprised by Skoda's decision not to continue offering the frugally minded Green Line version of the 1.6 litre TDI diesel derivative, a variant that used to be capable of hybrid light running cost returns. Still, most likely buyers will probably be quite satisfied by the figures that you'll get from this unit in its standard guides. Uh, so 68.9 mpg and 106 grams per kilometre.
Before choosing that engine, though, uh, take a moment to consider the merits of the petrol-powered TSI Alternative, a one-litre three-cylinder unit. And now this delivers much the same sort of performance and manages 58.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 110 grams per kilometre of CO2. Or for virtually the same money as you'd have to pay for a 1.6 TDI, there's a much pokier 1.4 litre TSI petrol power plant that manages 54.3 mpg and 121 grams per kilometre. And with all the engines I've just mentioned, you can fractionally improve those figures I've just quoted by opting for the freshly developed 7-speed DSG automatic gearbox that Skoda has introduced as part of the changes made to this updated Octavia lineup. Graduate up to one of the 2 litre Octavia models, and the auto transmission is the older 6 speed DSG auto that has a fractionally negative effect on your running cost readings. Here we're going to quote the figures for variants with manual transmission, starting with the popular 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel engine that we're trying today. This manages 65.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 113 grams per kilometre of CO2. Those figures fall, of course, if you add in the weight of a 4x4 system. So specified, a variant like the Octavia Scout Estate manages 58.9 mpg and 125 grams per kilometre. For completion, I'll also give you the figures for the performance oriented VRS models. Uh, choose one of these with 2 litre petrol power and you're looking at 43.5 mpg and 149 grams per kilometre. Go for the alternative uh, 2 litre TDI 184 PS variant and you can improve that to 64.2 mpg and 115 grams per kilometre. All these engines are helped in their fuel and CO2 returns by their relatively light weight, and that's made possible by this car's MQB platform, something that enables an Octavia to weigh significantly less than many of its rivals. Uh, this 2-litre TDI model uh, is, for example, 116 kilos lighter than a directly comparable version of Ford's Focus. Plus, there are all the usual eco-minded features you now expect to see on a car of this kind. Regenerative battery charging to reclaim energy that would otherwise be lost under braking. Uh, sleek aerodynamics and a start-stop system to cut the engine when you don't need it uh, when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Now, if your Octavia is a DSG automatic, then you'll also get the benefit of a coasting function. Now, that, at cruising speeds, disconnects the gearbox, leaving the engine to idle until you next need it. Across the Octavia range, the need to upgrade what lies beneath the bonnet into Euro 6 emission status has obviously also helped in the quest for greater efficiency. Uh, the TDI power plants that many customers will choose, like most modern diesels, get a selective catalytic reduction filter to cut down on nitrous oxide. And the TDI system is, these days, designed around the injection of a urea-based solution called AdBlue into the exhaust gas stream to help clean up the emissions. Now, that liquid is stored in a 12-litre tank mounted at the rear beneath the boot. This will need topping up as part of regular servicing, and you can monitor its status via a dashboard display option. But will the quoted figures really be achievable in real-world motoring? Well, the answer to that question depends, as usual, on how many of the driver-orientated efficiency tools you're prepared to use on a day-to-day -day basis. In cars fitted with the Drive Mode Select Vehicle Dynamic System, there's an eco setting which softens off the throttle response and on the DSG Auto models uh, gets the gearbox to change up early to optimise economy. Now this setting also saves fuel by only sending energy uh, to the air conditioning and the power steering when it's absolutely needed. You can monitor air conditioning system energy usage via a selectable convenience consumers readout on the Centre Dash infotainment monitor. Elsewhere on the same display there's a green score screen uh, that graphically scores your success or otherwise in motoring frugality. Another financial burden you'll want to plan around is insurance, although the Octavia helps here by sitting in lower groups than some of its direct rivals. Uh, predictably, the cheapest variant to get cover for is the 1 litre TSI petrol model, and that comes with the Group 14E ranking. Now, that compares to the Group 15 or 16E showing of the alternative 1.6 litre TDI diesel. If you want Octavia motoring with 150 PS, uh, then the 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine is rated at Group 19 or 21E, while the 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel that we're trying here comes in at between 21E and 23E, depending on the variant you're looking at.
As for the niche derivatives, well, the 4x4 Scout Estate is rated in Group 20E in 150 PS form or Group 23E if you have it with 184 PS. Uh, the VRS performance models are, of course, hit harder, rated at either Group 26E or 28E. What else? Well, there's a choice between fixed or flexible servicing regimes, uh, depending on whether your annual mileage is short or long. Uh, if you've got an Octavia variant able to access the uh, Care Connect features in the Skoda Connect app, there's a proactive service element included, which, when it's activated, can send all the data needed from your car in advance to your local Skoda dealership prior to a service visit. We'll also mention residual values, and they're very class competitive. Uh, now, if used demand for this improved Octavia reflects that of its predecessor, then you might expect to retain around 45% of your car's value after a typical three-year ownership period. Um, typically, TDI variants have done a little better, as have mid-range trim levels. Finally, while it's certainly true that other rivals better the three-year 60,000-mile warranty that Skoda provides, uh, you can extend that cover to four or five years by paying extra. Not that you really need to. Uh, the brand regularly tops independent consumer satisfaction surveys, so according to real people, there are a few more satisfying cars to own. The Octavia name, based on the Latin for eight, is an almost inseparable part of Skoda's history, dating all the way back to 1959 when it arrived to designate the eighth design produced by the Czech brand following World War II. In modern era guys, Octavias have sold prolifically, enough if placed end to end to fill three lanes of the complete M25. Many of those sales, of course, date back to a time when this was a slightly smaller and certainly much less sophisticated car. Today, buyers are being offered a very different kind of Octavia, one able to deliver an almost golf-like air of quality. The technology on offer certainly matches that of a golf, although perhaps inevitably an awful lot of it is either optional or only found right near the top of the range. Other commentators have expressed reservations about this improved third-generation model's more distinctive look, but we think it's a step forward. Anyway, whatever your perspective on this car's pavement presence, you can't argue that the improvements made to the cabin have really taken things up market. And that's something that certainly suits this Skoda's comfortable demeanour. Now, it's never been the most rewarding car to drive in this sector, but it's always been one of the most relaxing choices you can make. Ultimately, this is one of those instances where much has changed, but much will also remain the same. After all, uh, many will continue to choose an Octavia for exactly the same reasons that people have always bought into this model line. Solid build, sensible pricing, and most significant of all, more interior space than any other Focus or Golf segment rival can offer. To that practical perspective, this improved third-generation design adds a welcome bit of polish. It's no longer the cheapest choice you can make in this class, but arguably it remains one of the very cleverest.